This is because you said the Gentiles, right? Um, you know about your nationality, you know you're Israelite? Do you happen to know that? Yeah, I heard it. You heard it? All right, we're gonna go over it. So just to get you the full concept of it. Because give me Deuteronomy chapter 28 before we get into the Gentiles. I'm also show you what I was telling you also earlier. Because what ended up happening, Deuteronomy 28, but first give me, you said Psalms 147 verse 19? Because pay attention to this. But when God delivered the children of Israel out of Egypt, right? When they were in Egypt, what were their occupation? What were their jobs in Egypt? They were slaves, they were slaves in Egypt. Great, I, I, I like that you know your history. Now watch this, read that. Psalms chapter 147, verse 19. He showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. The judgments are what happens if you break God's commandments. Everything that happened in this Bible was only for the children of Israel. Right. I've been taught my whole life when I read the Bible that we were the Gentiles. So I was like, this Bible has nothing to do with me because from beginning to end, it's for the children of Israel. That's Until right. a, uh, I heard a teacher tell us that we were the children of Israel because of the curses. Deuteronomy chapter 29 and verse 1. Read Listen that. to this. You ever heard about the covenants? All right, read that. Deuteronomy chapter 29 verse 1. These are the words of the covenant which the Lord commanded Moses to make with the children of Israel. No, with everybody. With the children of Israel. Remember those judgments? He says, as for my judgments, the other nations have not known them. We're about to read it. Deuteronomy chapter 28. This is the covenant. Read verse 1, then read verse 15. Pay attention. What's your name, bro? Uh, what was that? Selvin? Selvin. And your name, sis? Shuala. Shirelle? Shirelle. All right, Selvin and Shirelle. And how about you, sir? Fred, Fred. Fred, Fred? All right, read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou wilt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments. You see how it says, it shall come to pass? When I say something will happen, what I'm telling you? The future. Wait, wait, read that. If thou wilt hearken... If thou, wilt, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Would it be equality if we would have kept God's commandments? If the children of Israel would have kept God's commandments? It wouldn't be no equality because he says, I'm going to set you on high above all nations of the earth. But as a people, are we higher than everybody else? Are we at the bottom? We verse 15. From 1 to 14 were the blessings of the children of Israel. From 15 to 68, those are the curses. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments. Remember, it said again, it shall come to pass. If this time, if we decided not to keep his commandments. Read. And his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Selvin, is curses good or bad things? Curses. Exactly. Curses are bad. I never heard of a good curse. So even when you hear about curse words, they're bad. So he says, I'm going to put these curses on you if you disobey my commandments. Now let's get a curse. Let's read verse 32. Pick up that sign, soldier. No, it's over here. It's over here. Pick up this sign. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, uh -huh. and thine eyes shall look, and fail with longing for them all the day long. So our children will be given to another people, and there will be no might in our hands to get our children back. That happened in the time of slavery. You see this. It says men, women, and children for sale. Did that happen to everybody? Because you hear it only happen in Luanda. You will you see it happen in China. But watch this, right? It says slavery. Your children will be given to the people, to another nation, right? Read verse 68, because you have to read the curses, but then they're not in chronological order. 
Watch this. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. When the children of Israel were in Egypt, they were what again? They were slaves. So he says, I'm going to bring them back into Egypt again. Not the land mass, because we walked out of Egypt, did we not? Now watch what type of transportation. You can put this down. Lift up the sun underneath. Lift up the sun underneath. We're bringing historical, we're bringing historical references all the way at the bottom. It's the one all the way at the bottom. We're bringing historical references to show you that the Bible is a true book. Read. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ship. We went into slavery on ships. That did not happen to everybody on this earth. Remember the covenant was for who? With God, with Moses gave it to who? To what people? To the children of Israel. Read on. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. As soon as we got off them slave ships, what happened? Seven, what happened? We, what happened? We were sold, read. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there you shall be sold unto your enemy. Were we sold to our friends? How you know they weren't our friends? What else happened? Do you know anything in slavery? What else happened? Right. They made us work. They beat us. They raped our wives. Think about it. 400 years of slavery. And we have been profited ever since. Read on. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men. For bonds, for slave men, read. And bond women. Huh? And no man shall buy you. Meaning nobody's going to redeem you. Now verse 64. Because you'll see that we're taken from the west coast of Africa. The things that they don't tell you about was that the first slave ship came from Europe. Because we ruled all of Europe during the dark ages. And then they took us and they brought us in over here as slavery. You'll hear it about the Moors. When they were conquering all the black kings. Like King James who authorized to translate the Bible, he was a black king. Right. It was King James of the first and the sixth of, um, of, of Great Britain. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth even unto another. That's, that happened. We were taken from one end of the earth to the other. The Hispanics were already on this side of the earth when you read the second book of Esdras. The second Esdras chapter 13. They were taken from this side to this side. Now watch this read. And, and there thou shalt serve other gods. Because in the Bible, you don't find this in the Bible. You don't find this Christ in the Bible. This is Caesar Bourget. He was painted as Jesus Christ during the Renaissance era when we were in slavery. That's right. This is what Jesus Christ looks like according to the Bible. And we and it's it's recorded. People say nobody's seen Jesus Christ, but yeah, who did they nail on the cross? Who did they nail on the cross if nobody ever seen him? It's depicted in the Bible what he looks like. Read on. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. The two major religions, Christianity and Islam, the two major religions that's killing our people. Now watch this, Jeremiah chapter 14 and verse 2. Bring Evidently those people that were put on cargo stations were dark-skinned people, were they not? You're a so-called African-American? You're a so-called African-American? You come from the tribe of Judah, right? Yes. And that shows on the sun. Read that. Jeremiah chapter 14 verse 2. Yes. Judah mourned, and the gates thereof languished. They are black unto the ground. What color are the Jews? They are black unto the ground. Evidently those people, the children of Israel put on cargo stations with what color? Because I'm looking at them. You are the product. You are the descendants of those same people. Right. That makes you a what? Does that make you an African American? No, it makes you an Israelite. That's right. right. You understand that because the judgments were only put on who? On the Israelites. So nobody could put claim to this holy Bible and say this book is theirs. It's Joel chapter 2 verse 27. And then we're going to break down the Gentiles. Bring it out. Because you got to understand, the God of this Bible is only the God of one particular people. Because the Chinese have their gods. The Arabs have their gods. The, the, in slavery, they thought that our God looks like this. God is not white. Christ said, if you see me, you've seen the Father. It's recorded in the Bible that Jesus Christ is a black man. What do you think the father looks like? God says he made man to look like him, right? And what did he choose to make man? What did he use to make man? You ever play with Play-Doh when you was a kid? He used dirt. So if I'm going to use the dirt of the ground, what color do you think that man is going to be? And he says, I'm going to make man in my likeness, in my image. That woolly textured hair in your head, Christ has the same texture. It's just white as snow. Like... Like Mr. Fred right here. 
when his when the when the hairs of his hair go gray, they start looking like what like it's white. That's right. I read that. Joel chapter two verse twenty seven. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else. That he is the God of the children of Israel, and none else. Right. Have you ever read that, sis? So he says, I'm your God and nobody else's. So can anybody say, oh, I can believe in Jesus Christ. I can believe, he, I can believe in this, and this is my God. You can't say that. Because God himself said, I am their God and nobody else's. That's right. No. For somebody else to read your Bible and say that this is their God, that's an insult. That's right. That is an insult because God says, I never chose them. Deuteronomy 7, verse 6. Bring it out. And then uh, 2 Maccabees. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are above all people that are upon the face of the earth. How special you are? Out of 60 years out of slavery, you have a black man inventing the traffic light, the fluorescent light bulb, the doorknob, the refrigerator, the air conditioning system, the folding chair, up the motor to, to start a car for the lawnmower. That's 40, 60 years out of slavery, our people are inventing those things. Those are not just dumb people. Those are special people. And when it comes to the sports world, we dominate it. Inventions, we dominate it. Politics, we dominate it. Right. Anything we touch, we dominate. That's a special people. They understood who they grabbed and who they brought to the Americas. We're the only people that can have suffered for so long and don't commit suicide right after. Now watch this. Um, Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 11. We was in time pass. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 11. Because you'll hear this, but the thing, the thing that we don't understand is that the Bible, when it was translated, who has the... Uh, the Zonovan Bible Dictionary. Zonovan Bible Dictionary. No, no, sorry, you stay here. He'll get it. He'll get it. He'll get it. Get uh, the, 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 the 1611 King James Version. Um, let me see. Yeah, 11. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh. You once were Gentiles in the flesh. You understand that? Because when it says you were once Gentiles, Meaning you became Gentiles. You were never Gentiles in the beginning. That's right. Because when you read the definitions of the Zondervan Bible Dictionary, a Gentile is commonly used for a non-Israelite. But sometimes you can refer to an Israelite as a Gentile, like the Samaritan women. The, the Samaritan woman in John chapter 4 that we're going to read about. But watch this. You got that definition? Yeah. Bible. Get that? Come over here. In the middle. The Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. We did not write this. Listen to what it said. Uh, page 86, King James Version. So 47 of the best Hebrew and Greek scholars of the day were divided into six groups. Three for the Old Testament, two for the New, and one for the Apocrypha. One for the what? The Apocrypha. So when the Bible is translated, the Apocrypha is included. Bring it out. That's the Apocrypha. Without this, you won't fully understand the Bible. You won't fully understand what was going down in the Roman Empire because the Bible is a history book. That's the right. Bible book, at the end of Malachi, what nation was ruling? Do you happen to know? It was the Persian and Medo Empire. And in the time of the New Testament, what empire is ruling with Jesus Christ? Because Jesus Christ was in slavery. He was enslaved to a particular race of people. Do you happen to know who they were? The Greek came before who? The Romans. Because the, remember, he says they live on to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, right? Caesar was an emperor for who? For the Romans. So during the time, because you'll hear about the centurion, right? Those were, those were part of the Roman Empire. You get that, right? So during the, in the New Testament, you're hearing about the Roman Empire. Before, in Malachi, it ends off in the Medo-Persian Empire. What's missing is the Greek captivity. Watch this. Uh, Second Maccabees. Read chapter 1, 1 Maccabees 1 and 1. Bring and then we'll get the history of what ended up happening in the Greek Empire on why it says before, and sometimes you're called Gentiles. To fully, uh, to fully understand that, you had to read this book. Because you can't open a book in the middle and expect to understand it. You have to read it entirely. Now read that. First Maccabees chapter 1 verse 1. And it happened after Alexander the son of Philip, the Macedonian, who came out of the land of Chedom. Did, did you ever hear about Alexander, the son of, uh, of, of Philip? Who is that? 
You understand that? So this is, it's true. Did he actually live? He's recorded in the Bible. But you never hear about, you never hear about Alexander in the Bible without the Apocrypha, have you? Because you had to read the Apocrypha. The Apocrypha just means hidden. These are hidden books. When we started revolting in the Caribbeans, that's when they removed this book. Now watch this. You finish that? That's, that's just to let you know that it's speaking about the Greeks. Now go to 2 Maccabees chapter 6 and verse 6. Listen to this because when we, during the Greek Empire, we was being killed because we were disobeying God's commandments. This is what, it still happens to this day. The, the cycle is repeating. It's redundant. When we break God's commandments, we're getting beat down. When we keep it, we're ruling. Because we end up ruling at the end of the Greek captivity, but then we end up falling back into sin. Read. 2 Maccabees chapter 6 verse 6. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient feasts or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. So you couldn't, you couldn't call yourself by your nationality. You couldn't say you was from the tribe of Judah during the times of the Greek Empire. So you're starting to understand why it was saying that you were sometimes in the past called Gentiles. Because back then, you weren't allowed to call yourself by your God-given name. So you was calling yourself by what they told you to call you. Just right. like today, you call yourself African-American. That's a Gentile name. Right. That's not your God-given name. Read. Verse 7. Verse 6. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient feasts or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. Uh -huh. And in the day of the king's birth every month, they were brought by bitter constraint to eat of the sacrifices. So they forced us to eat swine flesh, pork. And not only that, they forced us to keep birthdays. Because birthdays in the Bible, that's not, that's not of God. That's right. It's Christmas in the Bible is not of God. That's and we're right. going to prove that as well, we? And when the feast of Bacchus was kept, the Jews were compelled to go in procession to Bacchus, carrying ivy. Yep. Moreover, there went out a decree to the neighbor cities of the heathen. That's a law because they were in rulership. They, a decree, they pushed a law throughout all their land, read. By the suggestion of Ptolemy against the Jews uh -huh. that they should observe the same fashions and be partakers of their sacrifices. So we couldn't do what God intended us for us to do. Now watch this, read. And whoso would not conform themselves to the manners of the Gentiles. The word conform means to what? Right, to change into them. He says, if you did not conform to the manners of what? Of the Gentiles. So if you conform yourself to the manners of the Gentiles, you became a what? You became a Gentile. That's you understand right. that? Read. And whoso would not conform themselves to the manners of the Gentiles should be put to death. So in order for you had to, in order for the Jews, the children of Israel to have lived, they had to become what? You understand now. So in the New Testament, when you hear about Gentiles, you're just hearing about Israelites that conform themselves to the manner of Gentiles. That's right. Without this book, you don't understand the New Testament in its entirety. Right. You understand? Now watch this. Now let's go back to uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11. You had to know the history in order to fully understand what it was explaining in this chapter. Read. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11. Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh. That's because you became Gentiles in the flesh. You had to do the acts of what the Gentiles were doing. Read. Who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh. What, what is explaining about the circumcision? Because the circumcision, which were the Jews, because this is another part of the history. Ten tribes of the children of Israel from Ephraim down went into idolatry. They became Gentiles first. And then these three tribes were not conquered. Those were the ones that you hear about in Jerusalem where Jesus Christ went to, but some of them rejected him. And he says, I'm going to go into the ways of the Gentiles. He went into the ways for these people. Because can the Bible contradict itself? Watch this. Matthew chapter 1 verse 21. So you can fully understand because you have to know who Jesus Christ came for. So when he says, I'm going to go to the Gentiles, I'm going to the ones that became Gentiles in the flesh. Not the ones that already were Gentiles. That's right. Read that. Matthew chapter 1 verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. No, everybody. For he shall, for he shall save his people from their sins. Matthew chapter 15 verse 24. We understand that he came to save his people from their sins. Because remember, sin is the breaking of God's commandments. The commandments were given to who? The children of Israel. Not to everybody on this earth. That's why when we commit adultery, we're getting diseases, we're getting put to death. 
When we wanna, when we wanna not follow God's commandments in marriages, we have single households. When it comes, not not only that, but the abortion clinics with the abortion clinics have killed more blacks than cigarettes, tobacco alone, cancer. That's right. That's how bad it is in our neighborhoods. We Matthew chapter 15, verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Jesus Christ only came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Right. You were lost because you considered yourself African American. That's not your God given name. That's right. right. You come from the tribe of Judah, from the nation of Israel. That's right. That is your nationality. You have to start keeping God's commandments by men that were learned before us. And we, we took the legit and we proved it out of the Bible. God, the Bible says study to show that self approved. Right. And these men up here, they study. Read. Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 8. Verse 10. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind. Start from verse 8. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 8. For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come. It says for finding fault with them. The fault was us keep it, us breaking God's commandments. How do we know? Because you remember it says it shall come to pass if we broke God's commandments, what would happen to us? God. That happened. So we are at fault. We for finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, said the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. When the nation of Israel split in two, the house of Judah was these three tribes. These were the ones that were in Jerusalem when Christ came on the scene. These ten tribes went into idolatry, which is considered the nation of Israel. This the northern kingdom, this is the southern kingdom. We were brought here on 1619. They started being enslaved. He come from the tribe of Ephraim. They were being enslaved since 1492. Oh, so when they try to right. say, oh, we were the only ones in slavery. No, they were in slavery before us. That's right. Read. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant. They broke it, we, and I regarded them not, said the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts. That's why we're that's why we're out here to teach our people who they are. And how to receive salvation by doing what? How to get eternal life? But exactly. And after this, I'm going to bring the soldier back up so he can teach you some of God's commandments. Some of the ones we can we can physically see on you and teach you more to how you can receive salvation. You married? It's a, oh, all praises, brothers and sisters, all praises. I wish I'm the only one in my household, in my, in my, in my immediate family that's keeping God's commandments. I wish that my brothers and sisters can hearken on to God's words. We? And I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. Uh -huh. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me, from the least to the greatest. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. This is just, 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 to, put, just to put the nail on the coffin about keeping God's commandments out of Jesus Christ's own mouth. That's because um, Christ, the Father said, hear his words. At the end of the day, I will, what the pastors say, disregard. If we can't prove it in the Bible, hey, it's not true. That's Read. Right. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Huh? For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law. The law is still here. The only law that he came to done away with was the laws of sacrifice because who's our ultimate sacrifice he's the lamb he says when, when john the baptist son, he said behold the lamb of god will take away the sins of the world right the only way you could commit sin if the laws of god were given to you when he says world the nation of israel is considered a world in its own when you read isaiah 45 verse 17 but what i want you to leave with is commandments I want you to learn God's commandments so you can start applying it. Because that's how you're going to make your way prosperous. That's how you're going to be able to maneuver in this society. That's right. So, Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons.
IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.